my channel. So today I'm actually filming in the kitchen and there is a reason behind that. That is because Ava isn't actually napping today. She's in the living room watching The Secret Life of Pets. So I thought it'd be a little bit quieter if I just filmed in the kitchen instead. Now, I was actually tagged by the lovely Jo from Mama Chops. I absolutely love her channel. She is so funny and I just, oh, I just love her videos. She vlogs all over the place, her holidays, her walks, everything. And it's just amazing. I really love her channel. So definitely go across to her page when you're done here to have a look at her version. I will pop a link to her channel and a link to her Instagram page in the description below. So make sure you go and check it out after you're done here. So let's get going with the first fact. So fact number one that you might not know about me, I have actually been stung by a stingray. So this actually happened out in Costa Rica. I was on a surf trip with the lovely Kate who runs Surf Sisters. It was a, a surfari, so it was kind of like a trip down the west coast of Costa Rica and we were visiting all different surf breaks. This particular day wasn't brilliant, not obviously just because I got stung by the stingray, but surf wise, it was a little bit kind of mushy. It was just big waves breaking out the back and it was just kind of just all white water. So in the way of waves, it wasn't brilliant, but I was jumping up and down in these waves and I just happened to just jump straight onto a stingray and at that time i didn't even know it was a stingray i just felt this really really sharp pain like a hot knife going into the side of my foot kind of just next to where my ankle bone is and i knew it was obviously something serious straight away so i just jumped on my board and i paddled straight out um i kind of got onto the beach and just took my leash off like straight away but, but by the time i got to the beach it was really 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 painful and the more i kind of sort of i couldn't control my breathing the worse it got and that is because obviously the venom from the barb goes straight into your skin and obviously the heavier you breathe the quicker your blood is pumping and the quicker the venom is going around my system so around about 10 minutes after i'd actually been stung the pain was in my groin so it had gone from my ankle all the way up my leg into my groin so i got carried off the beach by a couple of the guys that were running the surf trip so there was jimmy who was from california he was kind of the male part of that group he was there kind of just on side to teach a little bit of the surfing along with elaine as well so both of those guys either side of me dragging me up the beach i had snot coming out of my face i was just screaming in agony i was in so much pain the worst part was that we got into the car to drive back to the apartment and i think jimmy had forgotten the keys to the apartment so we had to drive all the way back and it just felt like forever before we even got back to the room so when we did get back to the room jimmy put my foot in like the hottest of hottest water now doing that means that it draws the sting out um it took a while for the pain to go um we had a couple of people next door come across to see what all the screams were about one woman gave me a beer and um basically she said to me uh this is the worst pain next to childbirth that you will ever experience um it was nothing like um childbirth um that sting was painful yes it was very very painful and the worst pain i've ever felt up until that point but then obviously having ava yeah they don't really compare childbirth is way worse <laughs> so after that i ended up having to go to a costa rican doctor about two days after the actual sting had happened the reason for this was because the sting had got infected so there was a lot of swelling a lot of redness i couldn't really put a lot of weight down on my foot which was a real shame because i wanted to surf but i had to have an injection in my ass cheek which gave me a lovely bruise and then i had to have a course of anti 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 antibiotics why can't i say that uh, antibiotics i can't say antibiotics 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 anyway i had to go on a week's worth of antibiotics 
I think that sounds a little bit American, but you know, you get my drift. In the end, I ended up with the tiniest of scars. Um, and uh, yeah, just the memories attached to that now. So I have been stung by a stingray. Fact number two about me, I have been on the Australian show Bondi Rescue. Oh yes, this is my 15 minutes claim to fame. I didn't even get 15 minutes. I've timed it several times. It was seven minutes. Oh, hi baby. So what had happened, this was back in 2008. My ex-boyfriend had come out from the UK to visit me. I was doing a year across in Australia. He'd come across in, I think it was his Easter time when this happened. So we were having our very first surf session together and we were at Bondi and basically what happened was I was paddling for a wave and this wave, I mean Bondi itself is just crazy for waves and it's crazy for riptides and it's quite dangerous actually. So it's really not the best place to surf and it's so, so busy as well. So what happened, I was paddling for this wave, this wave kind of just jacked up behind me. I didn't realize how bloody big it was and it kind of just came crashing down on top of me and it kind of like span my board. It like tipped my board onto its side. And what had happened was that I'd just gone to pop up and I fell onto the rail, what you call the rail, which is basically just the side of my board sort of in line with my body doing so i cracked two ribs and obviously i didn't know at the time that it was two ribs i just just felt this really 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 awful pain i'd never broken a bone in my body it really really hurt um so i just panicked and i thought oh my god i just need to get in this is really really bad and so i tried to get back on my board i tried to paddle for another wave another wave came crashing down on top of me this time i smacked my chin and then i bruised all my face and then i tried to swap my board around with my boyfriend at the time um yeah it just didn't work we were just it was just it was just too much we were going over by the rocks and then before i knew it i looked up and there was a lifeguard coming out to get me um he was on one of the paddle boards no top on you know just brown as can be and it ended up being Whippet. I'm not sure if Whippet is still working as a lifeguard there. His real name is Ryan Clark and some of you might know that Ryan Clark also used to be in Home and Away. So I didn't know this at the time. Again, I was completely oblivious to this. All I wanted to do was just get out of the water. So I climbed onto his paddle board, he paddled me in and before I knew it, I had a camera crew in my face basically asking me if I wanted to be on Bondi Rescue. Now I knew what Bondi Rescue was because we lived in Bondi previously to this accident for around about two months before we then had to go off fruit picking because we spent all our money there. So um, I knew what it was. We'd seen them filming up and down the beach like constantly. We were always trying to get in the background of what was happening, just playing bat and ball or just frolicking around in the sea. But um, turns out I ended up actually being on the show itself. So yeah, that was my little experience. They kind of interviewed me. Um, I had to go up to the lifeguard hut, they checked my ribs, they uh, wrapped me in the foil stuff to stop me from getting cold. So they gave me what was called the green whistle, which is basically just pain relief, so you have to suck on that and then the pain just goes. It also makes you very kind of like delirious and I started sputting out all these sort of weird jokes and stuff that I thought were hilarious. Thankfully that never made the cut on the telly, so I'm really, really glad of that. And then they called the ambulance. Um, what you didn't see in Bondi Rescue after that was that we spent five hours, five hours in A&E. So Ben, my ex-boyfriend, had only just flown in that day. So he was like, he didn't even know what time it was. He was falling asleep in A&E. Um, yeah, so that wasn't the best start to our holiday. But um, I was told not to surf for a good few weeks, but we were going from Bondi to Byron and I ended up getting on my board about two days after that. So my ribs haven't really healed very well. There is kind of like a lump of scar tissue. Um, so every so often, particularly sort of around like winter time when the, when the weather's really cold, I do tend to start feeling a little bit of an ache down on that side. But it was a good surf trip and it was worth it. <laughs>
<laughs> as sad as that sounds. But yes, that is my claim to fame with Bondi Rescue and it still shows today. So if you guys have got Sky TV, sometimes on CBS reality, Bondi Rescue plays. So it's definitely worth having a check to see if I'm on there because every few months, somebody always texts me to say, I've just seen you on the telly. So yeah, I'm still on the telly 10 years down the line, but it's old news for me, but um, new news for you guys. So fact number three that you might not know about me, I actually wanted to join the army before I met Guy. The only thing that was actually holding me back with the army was my maths GCSE grade. Now I am absolutely shocking at maths. I am so so bad at it. I'm really dreading the time when Ava comes to me with maths homework because I will not be able to help her. I am that bad. So I ended up retaking my maths GCSE in a hope to get a grade C, which would then mean I could go ahead and apply for the army. But sadly, when I retook my GCSE maths at my old school as well, the teachers there that used to teach me, which was highly embarrassing, um, I actually ended up getting a grade D. So it was one grade up from what I originally got, which was an E, but it sadly wasn't enough for the army. So I kind of stuck it out at Lush and I'm so, so glad I did because I absolutely love Lush. If you haven't even sort of realized by now, I absolutely adore my job and I'm so, so, so passionate about the products. And I love meeting new people as well. So every time I go into Lush now, I'm constantly meeting the most wonderful people. So yes, if I had joined the army, my life would have been so much different to what it is now. I can't even begin to think about it. There would be no gi, there would be no, house there would be no Ava so I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason so I was meant to get that grade D and I am not meant to get anything higher I don't think that was the maths gods telling me stop but yes fact number four that you might not know about me I have been to Everest base camp so it was three weeks in Nepal it took us around about a week and a bit maybe shorter to actually get from Lukla airport which can i just say is also classed as the world's most dangerous airport right up to everest base camp and the reason behind that is because you have to actually acclimatize so there are days where you walk higher and then you come back down again to acclimatize to the altitude so the highest we trekked was five and a half thousand meters which is around about 17,000 feet. That wasn't actually Everest Base Camp itself. Everest Base Camp was ever so slightly just short of that. We actually went up to a place called Kalapatar. Now Kalapatar, if you Google it, it just looks like a little bit of dirt sort of piled up in and amongst the Himalayan mountains. It looks like nothing, but when you actually get there and you look up at it, you're like, holy Jesus. Sadly, you can't actually see Everest from Everest Base Camp itself because there's a whole stack of other mountains sitting in front of the actual big mountain itself. But when you do Kalpatar, you do it really, really early in the morning. So your views of Everest are just crystal clear. Probably gonna end up posting a few pictures up over me talking about it, but um, pictures don't ever really do it justification. It's just an absolutely amazing place and I feel very, very blessed to have experienced it. So my final fact, fact number five that you might not know about me, I actually didn't learn to swim properly until I was 11. I was so late with swimming. I mean, I was so embarrassed as well because all of my friends could swim. And obviously, as you can imagine, at age 11, I'm moving into secondary school and not being able to swim and having to try and take part in the swimming galas that they have there every year was just a little bit embarrassing. But here I am, like, Christ knows how many years down the line. Um, that's just proof I can't do maths. And, um, I can surf, I'm in the water all the time as much as I can be, I absolutely just adore the ocean, I've sailed across the Atlantic, there is just nothing that I don't love about being in the water. So 
Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Obviously it was meant to happen that I was meant to be a late learner. I don't want it to be the same case for Ava, so that is why we started her off with her swimming lessons when she was around about 16 weeks old and she is just flourishing and I absolutely love seeing her in the water. So to carry on the five facts you didn't know about me tag, I'm going to be tagging two other lovely mums into this video. So I'm tagging Kylie from Life of Tink and Turtle and I'm also going to be tagging Bex and Massey as well. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Oh my gosh, I really hope I am. So I'm going to put their links underneath so make sure that you keep an eye on their channels because their videos will be going up shortly as always guys if you have enjoyed this video then please give it a big thumbs up for me and if you haven't already then click that subscribe button thank you so much for watching guys and i will see you again soon